With their cutting edge technology and futuristic designs, electric cars have an air of luxury and mystique, even as they become more common on our roads today. But all that style certainly comes with price tag. Right? Up until recently, electric vehicles did actually cost more than similar gas cars due to expensive battery materials and extra high-tech components such as semiconductors. But are electric cars really out of reach for low- and middle-income families? As of December 2023, the average price of a new electric car was just around $2,000 more than the average price of a gas car, and that's before you factor in incentives or lease deals. In fact, if you look at EVs that are eligible for the $7,500 federal tax credit, the average price is actually $3,000 less than the average price of a new gas car. Incentives can make EVs as affordable, if not cheaper than a gas car. So let's talk incentives, since these are what help bring the purchase price of an EV down. Of course, once you have your electric car, operating and maintaining it is always going to be cheaper than a gas car. We'll get into that math in future videos. First, we have federal incentives. The federal government is making strong efforts to spur widespread adoption of zero emission cars. And the big headline here is the federal tax credit that can give you up to $7,500 off of a new qualifying electric car. What's more is there are now federal tax credits for used EVs that are targeted for low and middle income buyers. This is new as of 2023 and qualified buyers can get up to $4,000 off of qualifying sale. Starting in 2024, eligible shoppers can can use this federal credit at the time of purchase as a rebate or cash back on an eligible electric car, making it much easier to afford the car up front. Plus, if you use the credit up front, you can take advantage of the full credit rather than waiting till the end of the year and using it against your tax liability when you may not owe that much. Using it as a purchase credit is the easy way to max out the credit amount and 90% of EV sales are using it that way. Remember, in order to take advantage of the federal tax credit, the purchase must go through a dealership that has been registered with the IRS, you have to meet income requirements, and the vehicle itself has to meet some restrictions. But even with these limitations, tax credits are a huge win for EV shoppers. Say you qualify for the federal tax credit, but you're looking for a little bit more help. There are also dozens of state incentives available for both new and used EVs. Just how much buyers can get varies a lot by location and factors such as household income. Each state has their own unique programs, but these incentives typically come in a few different forms. There are state credits, rebates, bonuses, and these are the most common type of incentives because they really kind of help out the most. They help you with purchasing an EV by reducing the cost out the door. For example, last year Colorado launched its Vehicle Exchange Colorado program, which offers buyers a $4,000 point of sale rebate for used EVs in exchange for turning over gas guzzlers. It's kind of like a cash for clunkers for EVs. Plus, that's an extra $4,000 on top of the federal money. New York State also offers up to $2,000 on top of the federal credit for qualifying new electric cars so long as the purchase goes through a registered dealer. Point of sale rebates are like the gold standard since they're the easiest to use and help lower income families the most. However, generally they rely on limited funding and they may run out of money midway through the program. For your best chance, check to see when the programs in your area refresh and get on it. Now, if you're still looking for a little extra to get that EV in your garage, let's not forget local incentives. These include utility companies, air quality management districts, and various environmental groups that may offer deals or bonuses for EV drivers. And that's all because electric cars are such a critical part of improving improving air quality. So for instance, many utility companies offer special rates for EV owners who charge at home. These can include time of use plans or special demand response programs that give drivers credits on their bills if they change their charging habits when demand is really high or in the case of a heat wave. A lot of utility companies also offer credits and rebates for installing an EV charger. So there are really a ton of available rebates, credits, discounts, and bonuses to help you get in an electric car. But we haven't really answered our big question. Can incentives make electric cars as affordable as gas cars? Well, it's time to do the math. Even though most of the incentives that you read about in the news are for new cars, the truth is far more Americans buy used vehicles than brand new cars. 
Incentives are particularly important for low- and middle-income families that are likely to buy used cars instead of new. P.S. The U.S. Department of Energy's Alternate Fuels Data Center is a great place to start when looking for incentives. So how much can incentives bring the cost of an EV down? They can slash the price by thousands. So let's take an example, and this is gonna be a really optimistic one, but it's cool to do. So let's take a low-income family of three living in San Diego, California. They want to trade in their old gas car for a used Tesla. First, to qualify for the used EV federal tax credit, a vehicle needs to be priced under $25,000 and sold by a licensed dealership. We can do a really quick internet search and find a used Tesla for just under $23,000. If this vehicle qualifies for the $4,000 federal tax credit, this four-year-old car is now under $19,000. That's already a bargain. Next we have California's Vehicle Retirement Consumer Assistance Program, which is a mouthful, but basically gives low-income families up to $1,500 for retiring their old vehicle. Bye bye gas guzzler! The price of this EV is now $17,490. Finally, San Diego has a Clean Cars for All program that offers grants to low-income families living in disadvantaged communities like those with exposure and vulnerability to air pollution. That includes a decent chunk of downtown San Diego. The maximum grant is $12,000. So theoretically, our family can get this $22,990 Tesla for only $5,490. It's unlikely you're gonna get the full grant, but you can dream. Now that's not all. This family also qualifies for the Alternative Fuel Infrastructure Tax Credit, worth $1,000 discounted electricity rates from San Diego Gas and Electric and HOV Lane Access. So all told, our lower income family is eligible for over $18,000 in incentives. Now, our example family is lucky enough to live in California, which offers a ton of discounts for EVs and an awful lot of programs targeted at underserved communities. What if you don't have all of this access? According to recent data from Recurrent, the average price of a used vehicle right now is $25,540. But more than 30% of used EVs are priced under $25,000, and more than half are under $30,000. A lot of these lower priced models are new advanced models. There are almost 10,000 listings for EVs under $30,000 from 2021 to 2024. So these are new cars. Even without incentives, used EV prices can be pretty competitive. So let's answer the question we started with. Are electric vehicles as affordable as gas cars? Yeah, they are. The upfront cost of an EV may still be slightly higher than a gas car, but projections show electric vehicles will reach price parity with gas cars really soon, maybe by the end of the year. That's even before considering how many incentives are now available for new and used EVs, driving the price down further. In a few years, American-made EVs could be some of the most affordable on the market. And remember, EVs are only going to get cheaper. Gas cars may not.